Hey guys and welcome to my tutorial on how I painted Commander Farsight. One thing I will say before you get started painting with this model is please use sub assemblies. It's going to make your life 10 times easier. Uh, the first thing I did because the head's going to be a different colour is just leave the head detached and also this sword and his arm I literally just blue tacked that on. But the main pieces I could recommend are his little jetpack booster things on his back and, and he also kept off the shield and also the base on his legs it, it, if you wanted to paint the base separately you can do that and it pretty much clips in to the base pretty easy even though it's got tiny little pegs now I am going to teach you a couple of different ways that you can paint this miniature up. Uh, the primer that I've used, I actually mixed a bit of black and like a light grey I've got to get sort of like a Mechanicus standard grey colour. Um, so I'd recommend, you know, priming it in this sort of colour just to help with that build up of that red to get it in like a nice vibrant colour. Um, now if you obviously I'm using an airbrush in this and if you're not confident with airbrushes uh, I do have a video on Blood Angels which uses pretty much the exact same colours um, So if you want to learn how to do that with a brush and it does look a little bit more grimdark when you do it that way You get a nice little bit of texture on the base. Um, so I'll leave a link to that video um, And if you, you, if you don't want to do that way you want to use a rattle can then you could easily easily get something like uh, Mephiston Red Spray uh, and just coat all your miniature uh, in that colour and then follow along with the rest of the tutorial. I will apologise for my voice if it starts cracking during this video. Uh, I'm currently off with uh, the Rona, the Rona 19, I'm not going to say it so I'm not sure if the video still get demonetised for using that. Um, but the first base coat colour I'm using is by Army Painter and it is Enchanted red and um, we're just going to work our way around i've thinned this maybe three drops of thinner to every drop of paint uh, and this is so we can build up a nice thin layer i think it did take two to three coats for this base coat just to get it nice opaque and vibrant um, and then like i said with the sub assemblies it does make everything a little bit easier to get into all them nuts and crannies uh, and overall it just literally makes the painting experience a lot easier and you can get into all those nooks and crannies and then finally, I'm going to thin down some Mephiston Red. I had to thin this quite a bit because my pot is quite old and uh, it's starting to get a little bit thick. Uh, but I'm sort of using like a Zenithal highlight um, for this uh, with the Mephiston Red, leaving some of the Enchanted Red in the shadow areas. Now for the white areas, obviously here on the shield, I want the middle section to be white. So I'm coating, it looks like I'm putting some sort of like nylon oxide on here, but it's actually liquid mask. Now this is a great tool if you're going to be airbrushing or, you know, don't want to get paint on some of the other areas. I highly recommend this product. You just paint it on, it sets hard, uh, and you can spray over the top of it and literally it just peels off uh, like blue tack. Uh, and I recommend using blue tack to get it off, which we'll show a little bit later on. Now this is why we use sub-assemblies uh, and for white. Now when it comes to painting white, the, the, you know, the, the sort of rule of thumb is if you want something to be white, don't paint it white. If you want something to be black, don't do it black. So I'm starting off with like um, a, a grey colour. Uh, just start building it up slowly uh, on the miniature. And then we're going to slowly start to add white to that paint uh, and just build it up and build it up and again using that sort of zenithal prime like that zenithal highlight uh, we're going to paint all the and spray all the white parts again if you don't have an airbrush just get some like white spray uh, and just paint over the top of it because again you can follow along uh, with this tutorial by doing it that way now there is a little bit of a time jump here because this took the longest part of the entire miniature uh, but essentially uh, this is just a blackout phase so go in and paint all your black areas you can just use any black for this i just used ak black um, and you're just going to base coat everything out and you know get rid of all that red uh, and do it that way for the gold sections or the bronzy sections i literally used pro acryl bronze and base coated them in that uh, and then for the tabards like the tassels coming off his sword and his leg uh, i base coated them in ak dark brown 
I also gave the entire miniature a light dusting of gloss varnish. Not heavy, one just a very light gloss varnish is just to protect the paint that we're going to do a little bit later on uh, and to help uh, with a recess wash for it to run into those gaps. Now speaking of washers, uh, we're going to go into our pin wash and for this I'm going to use MIG Black Wash. Now a lot of people say that this is now discontinued, I'm not 100% of that, um, but you know there, there are a lot of enamel pin washers uh, out there that are available. Uh, this is the one that I use, I've just got a little bowl of mineral spirits and I mix it into like a nice thin consistency. And then basically, we're just going to get a, a very fine brush, and we're just going to literally. All you need to do is just tap into the, the the like the crevices and the the panels and stuff like that. And it's literally just going to because we've done that gloss varnish, it's going to run straight into them. And you just want to work your way around the entire miniature, uh, being very careful uh, when you're doing this. But however, if you do make little mistakes, I do it. Um, there'll be a, a little phase that you'll see a little bit later on um, where you just get like a cotton bud or a cotton sponge or a makeup sponge. And we'll literally, once it's dry, get about 10, 15 minutes to dry. And then you can get your cotton swab and just wipe away those little areas or little mistakes that you've made. And if you do find that you, you know, you, you wipe out some of those panel lines, you can just go back in uh, and tap some more into it. But this is what's going to give our miniature that definition uh, and that contrast. And it's just really going to pull everything together and help define each panel. Next up, uh, I gave the entire, once we've done all that panel lining, the entire miniature, of, again, a very light dusting of a satin varnish this time. Um, <clears throat> this would just uh, dull down that gloss look. I didn't quite like I don't really like mine to be glossy. Um, the beauty of doing like a, a light dust of it as well is you will get a little bit of a gloss showing back through in sections and sometimes I purposely miss that and this creates a little bit of surface variation uh, to the miniature uh, as though you know like some bits are a little bit wet or oily or you know it's just it's got some on the armor uh, that's not that's made it look a little bit different. Now we're going to go on to chipping. It's quite easy. Just get some old sponge or like packaging sponge, uh, rip it up. I've got some old crocodile clip things here that you use, you know, for <clears throat> when you're doing your um, parts, like to hold parts when you're spraying them up or whatever. Uh, and I'm just going around uh, and just tapping. I'm using a Rhinox Hide and I'm just adding little bits of chips uh, around the mini. Uh, I do pay a lot of attention to you know like the bottom areas where it's naturally going to get dinged up a little bit more and then areas such as like shoulder blades or the shield uh, I'm going to put a little bit more heavy chips on there as well uh, and this just you know it's a bit more realistic so if you've got like places like elbows and stuff <clears throat> those are naturally going to get dinged up a little bit more uh, so pay attention to those areas and then once you've done with a sponge all I do then is get my brush uh, and go back in and you know enhance some of those chips and like get like the edge of it it's like an edge highlight but it's not an edge highlight because you're, you're adding chipping but you're just going around and uh, defining those chips a little bit more making them stand out one thing <clears throat> i will add when you're doing red like this is add a tiny little bit of black into areas because the rhinox hide doesn't always show up as much as what it would on another color but if you add a little bit of black into there as well, into some of those chips, it does, you know, define them a little bit more against this red background. And then finally for the armor, we're going to use AK Orange Brown. Uh, this is a great color to highlight red because it's got that orangey yellow look and it just stands out a lot more on the red. And we're just going to go around and edge highlight and, you know, pick out some of those chips adding like little bits of highlight underneath to make them look a little bit more defined and then we're also going to do the same but with a white i used vallejo white on mine for the white areas and you're just going to go in with both colors and you know add little scratches and edge highlight certain sections just to define everything and make everything stand out just a little bit more now for the black areas, um, I'm going to use my favouritest metallic colour in the whole planet. Uh, because Commander Farsight, on the box art, it's sort of just, just black. They don't even put any metallic on it. However, I didn't want to do that because, again, I'd have to chip those areas. So what I did is I got Exhaust Manifold by uh, Vallejo. And what I did is just work my way around all the black slash metallic areas and just gave this uh, a very 
uh, light single coat uh, of this and again it doesn't stand out massively but it's just metallic -y there and it's just subtle and if you do want to edge highlight that then get something like a, a gun metal gray and just edge highlight certain areas we don't want to go mad with this we don't want them to look fully fully metallic uh, or steel or anything like that we want them to be as dark as we can but still retaining that metallic look and whilst we're on the subject of metallics, um, for the sword, I wanted it to be a little bit more bright and a little bit more ethereal. Um, so for that, again, we base coated it out in the exhaust manifold. And then I used Thrash Metal by AK-75. Um, and what I did, I just sort of worked my way around it, especially like the sharp bit, and just using tiny little lines and just building them up slowly. Uh, I went down the whole, the whole of the sharp bit and edged highlighted some of the other areas, and then I got uh, Vallejo Silver and went over those just to, you know, break it up a little bit and make them look a little bit more sharp. Now, I didn't quite like the look of it, but to bring the, all that together... Um, there's a really nice colour uh, by Vallejo called oil, oily steel, uh, or oil, oil steel. And what I did with that is because it's a bit darker, and I can't explain that that paint. It, it's very strange. Uh, it doesn't look oily at all. But I just gave the entire sword uh, a, a very light dry brush all over it, and it just fetched everything together. Um, and you can still sort of see through it onto those little jagged lines that we've done with the silver and it just fetches everything together just to wrap up finally now uh, some final details that we did to the mini was for the bronzy uh, gold areas i got uh, scale 75 light gold and put some like little scratches and edge highlights onto the gold areas and then for the tabards uh, i used ak dark brown wash and just gave them a wash and once that had dry uh, we got AK Dark Earth, which is like a, a bleachy, light bleach colour, and just dry brushed over those. And then some final details, if you do want to add them, uh, I got some contrast paints um, and put them like onto the sword and little light areas and stuff. These are little details that are entirely up to yourself. Um, and then on the tabards themselves, I didn't film it because it took forever and I was sat like we as close to my nose. I, if I'd have sniffed up i'd have literally inhaled the uh, the miniature that close and just added some patterns and some little random lines onto the tabards uh, and that pretty much concludes farsight that is uh, the entire miniature done oh uh, one final thing i did add some streaks which was ak dust and ak streak and grime i didn't want to add rust or anything like that because you know i feel like this has got a little bit of a different metal and i want to keep that ethereal theme going on to it so i didn't weather it as much as what i normally do my other miniatures uh, again that's an entirely up to you uh, i have got a bit for the base of this a lot of you might be asking about the base i have got a tutorial on bases coming out soon um but yeah that pretty much wraps up our miniature and uh, if you did enjoy this video if you could really really help me out if you could just share it or hit that like button that one little tap of that like button uh, has massive uh, effects for me and uh, the youtube algorithm so if you could please just do that and leave me a comment let me know what you think let me know what you'd love to see next um, and until next time guys a massive thanks for coming along and a massive thanks to all my new members as well uh, but yeah, until next time, I'll catch you in my next video.